Hello everyone. A very good afternoon. So warm welcome to all of you. Uh, I am uh, Seema Gupta. Uh, so right now I am director with Great Learning. And uh, before this, for 15 years, I was with IIM Bangalore as a faculty. I still teach at IIM Bangalore and my area of specialization is digital marketing. Apart from IIM Bangalore, I also uh, am a visiting faculty in digital marketing across a couple of other IIMs. Uh, like IIM Lucknow, I recently taught and uh, I've also been a visiting faculty at IIM Calcutta. So it's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, the structure of this session is we have 45 minutes uh, in which I will share with you some new trends uh, which are there in digital marketing. And uh, then uh, we have 15 minutes for Q&A. I want to keep it interactive. So if you have any questions in between also, you can put it in the chat. Uh, so I'm curious to know your names. So can you put your names in the chat? Put your names in the chat. And then if you can tell me in the chat, if you are a faculty, write faculty. If you are a student, write student. Some of you may be working professionals. So if you're working in digital marketing, then put in the chat working in DM. And if you're working in some other function area, functional area like marketing or operations, then uh, put that. I will get an idea about your profile. Great. I'm happy to see so many names coming in. And of course, uh, there are many faculty members and uh, there are some research scholars. There are some students and I'm sure all of you are coming from all over India. So this is mini India here. All right, so uh, let me get started. So there are many changes which are happening in digital field because it's rapidly evolving. So what are these some of the top trends and what implication it has for us? We will talk about that. So number one trend which I am seeing is emergence of voice search. So earlier people used to search by typing, but now people are speaking into the devices. So people are using uh, digital assistants like Alexa or Siri, right? Uh, so this has huge implication for what digital marketers can do. Do you want to put in the chat what comes to your mind? What implication it will have when search is shifting from text to voice? So when people are asking questions through voice, that means they can do multitasking. Their hands are free. It's very convenient, right? Uh, that means we can remove illiteracy barrier we can remove language barrier. So that means more people will use search because it's no longer restricted by whether people are literate or not, whether people know English or not. So it really opens up. What it also means is that we need more content in vernacular language because people may be asking questions in their local languages. Right. So when they ask questions in local languages, then the queries no, will be more localized and responses also, they have to be more local. So we need more vernacular content. Apart from that, it also means that when people are speaking, then the queries are very natural. So people will not be thinking about keywords. When we type, we think keywords, we think of brevity. We want to be concise because we want to be lazy. We don't want to type so many keywords, but when we are speaking, it's very fast. So we don't have to think in keywords. So that means it, it will be more natural. So our queries will be more colloquial. They will have slang, right? Uh, they will be more in the form of questions. 
they will be more long tail because it will be more natural right now this will have implication for digital marketers because now digital marketers they have to think beyond keywords so when they are doing search engine optimization they should not be confined to what is the keyword search volume and what keywords to put basically algorithms will try to find out what is the intent behind the query what does the user want to know and whatever web pages are able to address that user intent in a better way will rank higher so intent becomes more important and keywords become less important because voice will become a predominant way of searching so it will replace keywords so what it means is it will lead to death of keywords death doesn't mean that keywords are not important but they are not important in a literal sense so what is important is the concept the meaning behind the query and the concept and semantics of your web page so as a marketer no we need to understand the intent and then we need to write content which satisfies that intent better than competition another implication of this would be that speed is of essence because speaking is faster than typing right now you becoming impatient there is old fish effect so attention span is very small now that means that your pages have to load very fast so you are creating good content but if your page is very slow it's not loading then google is not able to index search engines are not able to index retrieve then there's no point in doing any seo so speed will become even more important because voice is faster than typing right so let me know if you think there are some more implications of this voice search so yeah uh, i saw so many interesting profiles are there i see most of you are mba students which is great uh, prateep is a digital marketing uh, student so many students are also there and there are many faculty uh, and uh, sakshi is saying that voice is important because it will lead to convenience it will save time and uh, dialect also it will detect yeah so when you are speaking no it can even catch your emotions it can catch tonality so whether you are framing like a question or it is like a statement you may not be putting a question mark but the way in which you speak will help in identifying whether it's a statement or a question mark are you angry are you in a hurry so all those emotions they can be discovered in uh, voice search okay great i see people coming from different uh, profiles so voice search is number one uh, trend uh, which is happening in digital marketing put in the chat if you think there are more implications so two three implications i told one is it will lead to death of keywords death of keywords is only in literal sense so search engines are becoming smarter they don't need the help of keywords any more so when you are writing content a piece of content search engine should be able to understand the meaning the semantics the concept they don't have to rely on keywords and the user will also not be typing in keywords so queries will become more natural right so responses also have to be uh, framed in that way so they have to be more colloquial more informal more long tail more in the form of questions now another big trend which is happening in digital marketing is technology is playing a bigger and bigger role and we all have heard about artificial intelligence machine learning uh, playing such a crucial role and they are also very important in digital marketing and their importance is basically in the form of a pyramid and the pyramid has got three layers so the bottom most level of pyramid is ai and ml is used in bidding now all of us know that in digital marketing you don't have a rate card so it's not like a times of india 
which has a rate cut for column centimeter. It's not like star plus, which has a rate cut for a 30 second ad, right? Here in digital, price is discovered by bidding. So every time the user is searching in Google, auction is happening in real time at the back end. And multiple marketers, they are competing. They want to show their ad at the top. But only one ad can be shown at the top. Right? So the platforms like Google here is basically computing an ad rank. And Google is computing who will be the winner of the auction. So the different marketers, they will be ranked in order of one, two, three, four, like that. So the marketer who is winning the auction will get the ad placed in number one position. Then the marketer who is getting second ad rank will get the ad placed in number two, number three. And then lower the rank, then ads will start coming in number two page, number three page, like that. So basically, auction is based, price is discovered based on auction. And auction is happening in real time. So there is no fixed rate card. So price is discovered in digital based on bidding, based on demand and supply. Right. And here, whenever auction is happening in digital, it's not just a function of how deep your pockets are. So it's not that the marketer who's bidding the highest, that marketer's ad will get placed. No. Of course, it considers the bid amount, but it also considers quality. So what is the quality of your ad? So suppose there is an MNC, a multinational corporation and multinational corporation is bidding very high, but the quality of the ad is low. And how can we judge the quality of the ad? We can judge by click rate. So how many people are clicking? How many people are going to the landing page? How much time they are spending on the landing page? Now, if the quality itself is low, then that marketer will not win the auction and hence that marketer's ad will not be shown, even though the marketer may be bidding very high. So what is the quality? All that is determined by AIML. So role of AIML is only increasing because quality is becoming more and more important in digital. It's not just a function of how much you are willing to pay for a click or for an ad exposure, but it's a function of whether people are finding your ad relevant or not. Okay, so AIML plays a huge role. Now, another field in which AI and ML is playing a significant role in digital marketing is targeting. See, you may make a very good ad, but if the ad is shown to wrong people who are not part of your target audience, then it will not be effective. So technology here plays a very crucial role because technology can do predictive modeling. It can find out people who are more willing to respond to your ad. And so ad can be shown to them. Right. So technology here will gather data in real time based on online behavior of people and then show ad to those people. Now, somebody who has put item in the cart, but then abandoned the cart is more likely to purchase than somebody who has not even heard the name of the company. So technology will identify those people that this user went to the website, put items in the cart, but abandoned the cart. So show ad to him. Technology will find out lookalike audiences. So lookalike audiences are people who are similar to your best customers. So you already have your paid customers. Now technology can do predictive modeling and find people who are likely to behave in the same way as your best customers. Now this can be based on numerous factors. It can be based on geography. It can be based on device that they use, the operating system that they use. It can be based on online behavior, their psychographics, their interest, the groups that they join, pages that they like. So AIML is able to 
analyze so many factors and then identify people who are likely to respond to our ad. So ads will become more effective. So that is how it shapes targeting. Now the top most thing in uh, digital marketing is messaging. So AI ML is now playing a role in what messaging do you want to convey to the target audience? So now we don't have a standard ad, rather we can customize the ads. So marketers are now putting multiple headlines and which headline to show to which user is determined by technology. Now marketers are uploading multiple images, multiple videos and different images, different videos are shown to different people because it's predicting that which image will resonate better with this user. It is also personalized. So for example, if the user is a woman, then images of men may be shown in the ad because opposites attract and vice versa. Similarly, if an ad is shown in the morning, then the image which is having a bright sunny picture may be shown. But if it is evening, then different kind of more sober colors, cool colors, they may be shown. So technology is working hard to make digital marketing effective. And this is the pyramid which shows that how it is working at three levels. So lower most level is bidding, then targeting, and ultimately it is personalizing the messages and it is customizing. So when you customize message, it's not a cookie cutter message, but it will resonate more because then you are able to address the pain point of the target customer in a better way. Now, third trend uh, which I am observing is a chatbot. Let me know which chatbot have you recently interacted with in the chat. Write the name of the chatbot. So for example, like I interact with Domino's uh, Dom, it's a chatbot. So tell me in the chat, which chatbots do you use? Which company's chatbots appeal to you, you interact with? Now chatbots are becoming such a raise because people don't want to wait. People want instant answers. And chatbots, they provide uh, answers to their queries uh, instantaneously. So people go to the website. They don't want to, they can't uh, find answer to a question. They don't want to send emails. They don't want to go to social media and then ask. They want answer there and then. So chatbot becomes very handy. So what we are seeing is that chatbots are a very big success story. And uh, people are interacting, even though people know that there is no real human behind the chatbot and it is driven by AI ML, but they are okay with that because still they feel it is interactive and they are getting answers immediately there and then. Now, interesting trend which is happening is that people are comfortable sharing their information like email IDs, phone numbers over chatbot. Now, marketers are using chatbot as a mechanism for collecting leads. So chatbot is not just for answering basic queries. So you can have FAQs, right? You can have links ready. So when anybody is answering, is asking a question, you can share those links. So it's very good for the company because they are saving on resources. It's good for the user because it's uh, instantaneous. But companies are using chatbot for over and above beyond this. And that thing is collecting leads because people are okay with sharing phone number, email ID and getting a call back. So like when I consult with companies, we are seeing this happening in real estate. So marketers are uh, collecting leads and then sales team is calling and then talking about a particular project and it's helping them arrange for site visits. Now, another interesting thing which is happening in chatbot is that these chatbots know they can have a personality of their own. 
so they have a persona uh, so okay i got some responses in the chat uh, pratiksha has interacted with ola chatbot vikas has interacted with flipkart pinky with amazon chatbot uh, eswarya with uber absolutely and now this big billion day and a uh, lot of diwali sale is going on so i can understand why you are hooked on to flipkart and amazon <laughs> no so interesting thing is that what can now have a personality so dom for example is male right disney whenever they are launching a movie they are also launching a character a chatbot which is interacting with people on facebook messenger uh, whatsapp etc so these chatbots are having the same personality as disney characters so the benefit is that people are able to get a feel of these characters they are able to interact the character comes alive and this increases the sale of movie tickets for disney right so chatbots are becoming a branding device so just like your visual identity for a brand no so brand will have a logo will have a tagline will have a jingle now chatbot is also a part of your brand identity and chatbot is even more powerful because it's like ronald mcdonald you are creating a character right it's like a mole girl so chatbot will help in visualizing the character and the brand personality another big trend uh, it had a slow start but now it is picking up and that is virtual reality and augmented reality in marketing put in the chat bot what virtual reality have you experienced in the recent past so which company's virtual reality did you experience virtual reality comes very handy when the experience itself is risky so for example if you have to climb a mountain that's very risky right now companies can expose you to that experience without exposing you to the underlying risk or when the purchase is of a category which has to be simulated it's not possible to have a real experience so for example real estate furniture companies like ikea uses virtual reality uh, statue of unity uh, sunil that's a very good example or kia is using uh, for cars virtual reality cars 24 jigar is saying cars 24 absolutely so that is uh, fantastic so for example let it us uh, when they wanted to launch an outdoor uh, outfit so they launched a vr app and with the help of vr application people could follow the instructions of a expert mountaineer and they could climb the mountain so basically adidas was able to communicate with this vr application that how this line of clothing is very suitable for outdoor activities like mountain climbing and here people could get this entire experience without putting their lives in danger and this VR application proved to be a success in launching this new line of clothing with Adidas, and they were able to clock sales. It is also becoming very prominent in uh, fashion uh, sector. So Topshop, uh, which is a pioneer in uh, fashion category internationally, so they showcased VR experience. wherein people who couldn't attend a fashion show uh, they could put on this vr headset and they could feel that they are sitting in the front row of a fashion show and they are rubbing shoulders with the celebrities with the models and they could experience this entire fashion show right now what this does is you are able to increase the reach of your brand and this vr experience is much more richer and now meta is talking about metaverse right so it is an extension of vr 
it is like we are with a lot more other things so the world is moving in that direction neha is saying thumbs up ad with rithik roshan exactly so many companies are using it so ike is using it home depot you uh, point your camera at a piece of furniture and then you can visualize how it will look in your living room so to what extent it will blend with your other uh, with your ambiance with your colors with your wall color scheme etc so it is gaining traction it is also getting application in uh, cosmetics uh, so in beauty so for example for women it's always a challenge to buy lipstick online because how a lipstick will appear will look on your face depends on your skin tone and uh, so for that sephora has found an answer so they have a vr app lenscart has an app right so sephora has an app and you can see how the lipstick will look on your face right it is also being used in theaters so amc theaters were the pioneers in this and they found it's based on consumer research and consumer insight they found that people are very curious when they go to movies no when they go to a multiplex they are curious about new releases now typically these new releases are they just empty posters so you just look at the blank poster and there is nothing more so they converted these posters into ar application so you can scan these posters and then they can become interactive so you can find out you can see the trailer you can find out the star cast you can look at critic reviews right and then even more you can book tickets for the new releases in advance so how cool is that right you are using an ar app and then you are increasing the booking the chances of customer booking for the next movie is higher when the customer is in the multiplex when the customer is in this mental zone of enjoying the movie the chances of conversion are much higher right so that's so cool you can uh, you can get the movies you can get the bookings for new releases much in advance you don't have to wait for the weekend to release and then to open up the bookings absolutely uh, so many people have given some more examples uh, in the chat now another big trend which i am observing is that micro moment marketing so digital marketing is all about real time marketing so one is you have evergreen marketing which is planned but another is you do spur of the moment marketing which is very creative uh, which uh, is ingenious right and here you can make use of these five uh, triggers so number one trigger is you always be ready you be ready for any development which is happening in the environment so for example amul so amul holdings are always contemporary right they are not stale so whatever is the flavor of the season it may be some political a uh, thing which is happening it may be uh, ukraine war it may be black lives matter it may be football world cup so they will come up with content which is aligning with what is trending currently this is very very important in digital marketing because when you align your content your marketing with what is happening now then you remain relevant otherwise you are irrelevant people are not interested they don't care because you are living in your own world which is not aligned with what people care at that particular moment so it's very important for marketers to do real time marketing to do micro moment marketing and number one way of doing it is by always being ready so you be prepared with content but always be ready to capitalize on any opportunity that presents itself and quickly turn around now what it means is that your digital marketing team needs to be empowered they should have delegation you should allow people to make decisions on the fly you shouldn't have hierarchies because if you have hierarchy no then they have to take approval can i post on this now by the time you get approval <laughs> that event is already over so you can't do that right so it's important 
that you empower your teams, you delegate, and then they take accountability, and then they seize the moment. Number two way you can capitalize on it is I want to moments. So there are moments where people want to do something and they express their desire on social media. Now, as a company, if you're deploying social listening tools, then you can scrape that and you can understand what they want to do. So, for example, MasterCard, when they were doing social listening, they found that around Mother's Day, many people, they wanted to take their mothers to a holiday. And the destination which came out to be a strong favorite was Bali in Indonesia. Now, people said they want to take their mothers for a holiday in Indonesia. So this will be the gift to their mothers on Mother's Day. Right now, MasterCard went ahead, struck a deal with some hotels and with some uh, airlines in Indonesia and then came up with a campaign which offered a holiday package, a discounted holiday package exclusively for women on Mother's Day. It was a huge success because it's capitalizing on I want to <clears throat> moment. <coughs> uh, another very interesting thing. So let me know any examples that you can think of about real time marketing. Real time marketing, put in the chat. What example you have seen? Moment marketing, real time marketing. Now, another thing you can leverage is time. Focus on time. So your timing has to be right. So time your campaign when there is something unexpected is happening. So for example, Red Roof, uh, it is a hotel services company. Now they identified that every day, 90,000 people in America, they are stranded on the airport because their flights got canceled. Imagine it's a big number, 90,000 people, right? Now they put some technology to get this data about which flights are getting canceled, right? And uh, which passengers are not able to board their flights. They sent a message to these passengers stranded on the airport. Come stay with us. Now this gave them huge number of bookings because it is at the right time. Right. Arjuna is talking about COVID uh, that many retailers know they uh, leveraged COVID and put out right messaging at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. In the chat, there are many examples which are uh, coming up uh, during Olympic. During uh, Olympics, many people use Saina Naival, they used uh, uh, PV Sindhu, right? Absolutely. Any viral incident which happens, Bina is saying, link with it. Absolutely. Another way uh, you can do moment marketing is by focusing on location of users. So Dunkin Donuts came out with a very interesting campaign. So the moment people were typing and searching coffee near me, then they ran ads of Dunkin Donuts and not just ads, they give real time updates that how long is the waiting period and they allowed people to place order. And by the time people reach the uh, outlet, the coffee and whatever is their order will be ready. So that's very smart marketing based on location of users, right? Another thing is sports events because sports events, they have a lot of passion. They have a lot of users uh, which are uh, wanting to be spectators or watching on TV. So sports events have huge eyeballs, right? So if you can leverage sports events, and uh, this is a very popular case study, although little old, but Oreo. So many years ago in Super Bowl, lights went out and it was dark and this was very unusual. And lights went out for a relatively long period of time, 30 minutes. 
Now, Dung, uh, Oreo was very uh, quick on its feet. And they sent out a tweet. Uh, it's dark. No problem. You can still dunk in the dark. And they sent out an image of Oreo radiating light. Now, this is such a simple uh, tweet, right? They said, lights out, no problem. You can still dunk in the dark. Means you can still eat in the dark. And they sent out a very relevant imagery of Oreo. And Oreo is like cream, no? And cream is white and it's radiating light. Now, this simple tweet, it got retweeted 15,000 times in just 24 hours. So that is smart marketing, right? Arjuna is saying you can do location marketing. So if somebody is just walking near your store, no, you can talk about discounts uh, which are available. Absolutely. So as a marketer, my advice is that we shouldn't always go by script. So digital marketing gives you a lot of opportunity to be creative, to think on your feet. Uh, right. So leverage this moment marketing. Another interesting example of this moment marketing is uh, it was done by Oreo uh, Cookie. So they announced the birth of Prince George, uh, this royal family, uh, right, uh, of UK. So when the prince was born, they created a tweet. And the simple tweet, you can see milk bottle. And very smartly, they put uh, Oreo Cookie uh, alongside milk bottle. So they were able to connect with UK audience. And recently you saw, right, when the queen died. So people waited. Uh, there was some eight kilometer line for paying respects to the queen. Right. So this queen and royal family and all is very big in UK. And Oreo wanted to connect with users in UK. So this is a very powerful way. Right. Uh, uh, Ramesh is saying, uh, Cadbury ad, Diwali kisse khush karenge? Is Diwali kisko khush karenge? It's an, it's an ad. Yeah, so that is topical marketing, right? Diwali is coming. So your communication will be around Diwali. Aparna is talking about memes. Uh, see, Hindi uh, series, no, they are killing it with memes. And uh, you have all this, uh, that Pankaj, what is his name? I'm forgetting. Uh, some Hindi series, they become very popular, right? And then there were so many memes, Hera Feri memes. So it's very topical. Panchayat, Panchayat uh, meme. Absolutely. See, another interesting example I have. This is, there is a brand called Walkers. So these are Walker chips. They tied up with Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker is a, a footballer, former footballer. So Gary Lineker said that uh, he will present a man of the match trophy only in his underpants if Leicester City won the trophy. Okay, so he said he will present uh, this uh, trophy if Leicester City won the trophy only in his underpants. So workers came out with a campaign wherein uh, Gary Lineker's body is only covered with packet of chips. And then they started this countdown. So as the matches started happening and Leicester City became closer to winning the uh, trophy, the packet of chips started disappearing. And then eventually only his modesty was covered with one packet of chip. All the packets were removed. So it built a lot of anticipation, right? So that's an interesting campaign. Rather than just uh, living in your own world and doing something, align with what's happening, then you have chances of becoming viral. Yes, Pankaj Tripathi, yes. Uh, okay, now another trend uh, or uh, important thing for you to keep in mind is that uh, sometimes no digital marketing is used for very tactical purposes. And uh, there is no strategic agenda that we are able to drive. So my recommendation is that we should not get lost in just daily posting, daily likes, etc. We should have a bigger picture 
also in mind a strategic objective once in a while we should step back we should zoom out and then think of an idea which will create an impact and this impact marketing will have higher level of creativity it will have higher risk it will break the clutter because digital is very crowded everybody is like shouting at the top of their voice right so you can get drowned out so it's important to raise the bar be more creative so for example uh, mini they wanted to launch a model mini getaway so this was a weekend getaway mini car for launch they basically launched an app and app was nothing but a game so people had to download this game app and uh, uh, this was launched in stockholm and uh, people had to chase a virtual mini and within 500 meters radius somebody else can take away the mini from you so the entire stockholm was jammed with people people were running on the streets because they were participating in this game they were running because they were trying to catch other people's virtual mini and then once they got it they were trying to run away as far as possible right so people were old young uh, men women all age groups they were literally running on the street and the whole city came to a halt and then the person who won the virtual mini got actual mini car now this is impact marketing you are building aspiration you are gamifying right it's not passive it's not that people are watching a banner ad no and people are average engagement time was 6 hours an ad for how long can an ad engage people is this 10 seconds right goldfish effect you can't hold attention of people for even more than 8 seconds now this campaign was able to hold attention for 6 hours and this has become experiential so user will never forget this so those who participated in this mini is entrenched in their minds forever right and then people took on social media they shared their experiences uh and it became viral it became a case study pokemon exactly pokemon also did the same thing but this mini campaign no it happened before pokemon probably pokemon get an idea from here okay uh, another trend uh, which is there we all are aware uh, people are getting more attracted towards videos and because attention is decreasing so people are looking at short form videos so that's why youtube shorts reels they are becoming more popular so what i've seen is that if you are making reel uh, which is based on trending music then it tends to get more viral then making real which is just in isolation so as a marketer we have to capitalize what users want so if the users are hooked to reels and reel is short form content reel is video reel can capture your emotions right reel will give you more credibility because seeing is believing right so we should make content like behind the scenes it will build trust when people see your office when people see your factory it will build trust and then more people are likely to buy right we can do product reviews uh we can capture emotions so short form content video content that will give you greater growth than only static image content and short form even if you are making an ad no rather than making very long form ads 40 second ad 30 second very difficult to hold attention make only 15 seconds ad you can attract people you can retain people whole message will be communicated and ultimately these platforms so platforms is meta meta and google right these are the two big platforms and of course then there is snapchat and pinterest and uh, tiktok which even got banned right uh, so all these platforms so what i am observing is that they are constantly evolving so nothing is static so my recommendation is that we should not overly depend on one platform because tiktok it was very big suddenly it got banned consumer behavior is constantly changing 
youth is moving out of facebook and is now only on instagram now even older generation is getting on to instagram so tomorrow youth may leave instagram also and uh, go to tiktok or snapchat or maybe some new platform may emerge so as a marketer we should not be putting all our eggs in one basket we should diversify we should use different platforms for different strengths right and uh, yeah so there are many platforms which are emerging like ott now how to run advertisement how to run ads on netflix right hotstar uh, there are so many other uh, platforms uh, which are emerging so the algorithms of all the platforms what i have realized based on so much research is that ultimately everybody wants to maximize their profit and how do they maximize profit they maximize profit by maximizing revenue from ads so they want to show more and more ads right now how do they show more ads they show more ads by keeping people for longer time on the platform so when people are spending hours on the platform every scroll can have an ad so more hours they spend more they will scroll and more ads can be given right so ultimately platforms they want to maximize their profit which will happen when people spend more time on the platform now how will they make users spend more time on the platform by designing their algorithm which rewards content which creates engagement so algorithms are in favor of content which engages which gets like share comment because high highly engaging content will make people spend hours and hours on the platform and when people spend hours and hours you can show more ads when you show more ads you maximize your profit and ultimately all these are private enterprises their objective is to maximize their own profit right but good thing is engagement is user feedback so if content is engaging that means people are liking that content right so it's a rewarding content which is good so as a marketer we must make content which is engaging and what matters is the first 30 minutes of your posting that is the micro test just one minute and i'll take questions this is the last slide first 30 minutes uh, so your content has to get engagement in first 30 minutes so uh, yeah so that is all uh, that i have we discussed about different trends in digital marketing if you want to see more of these trends if you want to uncover the the depths of these platforms uncover algorithm uncover more about how ai and ml is used in digital marketing how can you increase subscribers how can you grow your instagram channel how can you generate more leads then uh, this is the third revised edition of my book which has been released it's available on amazon and you can uh, take a screenshot and then you can scan uh, to buy this book and i'm sure there'll be some uh, you know uh, you may get some discounts if you buy immediately after uh, this so this book is very latest and i am very particular about making sure that the book is updated that is why i constantly release revised editions of my book so almost every year or within 2 years i am releasing new edition and this is the third edition it covers many more interesting topics it covers snapchat it covers pinterest also it uh, discusses reel uh, at length so have a look at this uh, book now another thing is uh, connect is a platform of macro and now this book is also available on connect so there is an uh, ebook version so you can buy this book from amazon flipkart and connect is a very good platform uh it not just makes ebook available but it also has extra resources so extra resources like question bank practice exercises uh right projects 
there are quizzes so many extra resources are there there are additional case studies there are discussion questions so i have been trying to make your job easier as a faculty or as a student and we'll continuously keep on building on this connect platform okay now i can take questions so uh, uh, yes please uh, put questions in the chat i will uh, take it up so put specific questions uh, many of you have put very interesting comments and i think we can learn a lot by looking at these comments so i urge all of you to look at these uh, comments which are coming in the chat uh mohammed is asking give insights on user feedback and user rating in seo mohammed that is a very interesting question see in seo user feedback is coming in the form of backlink so search engine will prioritize those pages which have got backlinks so backlink is nothing but user feedback so when one site is linking to another site that is a feedback that uh one site is endorsing another site right uh, it is like a reference so it is third party endorsement another user feedback example in seo is social media so if you are putting up content on your web page and if you put social buttons and if people like comment share then it helps your seo as well so user feedback is important in seo as well okay one interesting question is ashish is asking uh, should you become a generalist or a specialist in digital marketing see in digital marketing no uh, i think when you start your role may be more of a specialist so you can start in seo or social media Uh, or in content team or in email marketing team but as you rise higher in the hierarchy then your role will become more of a generalist so when you rise to a manager position then you must know little bit of everything so it's not enough for you to know only seo so you should know seo you should also know paid campaigns you should also know email marketing so my recommendation to you is that when you start your career in digital marketing try for job rotation so work for one year in paid marketing then request your manager to put you in email marketing or whatever so try to work in different teams that way you'll have in depth understanding of each uh, vertical of digital marketing then when you become manager you can manage your team very well right okay use of digital marketing for fmcg abhijit is asking abhijit interesting point see earlier fmcg companies like hindustan unilever procter and gamble they were using digital marketing only for top of the funnel only for brand building so they would buy ad inventory on youtube so youtube ads were very similar to tv ads so they were doing only brand building so objective was to create awareness maximize exposure generate many impressions reach but now FL, fmcg companies no they are having a call to action of buy so they want people to click and they are opening their own uh, e-commerce stores and uh, they are generating sales and one of the primary drivers for this is that they want to collect data because fmcg companies typically don't have data they don't have email ids they don't have phone numbers of customers because all that data is never collected because sales happens through channels right retail stores so data is with the stores so now fmcg companies are using digital for brand building of course but also for bottom of the funnel okay uh how to create website for beginners in digital marketing sabana is asking sabana my recommendation is if you are a beginner you go for wordpress website because wordpress website no is like plug and play uh you don't have to code you don't have to understand the technicalities programming is not needed and uh, when you are adding more content suppose a new blog article that you have written you don't have to depend on a developer you can uh, upload yourself 
so you can use wordpress there are many plugins which are available which are for free so your site can be customized and it's easy to manage right okay uh so how to evaluate effectiveness of digital marketing for lifestyle companies zamira is asking see evaluation of digital marketing is uh, easy because it's very data driven right uh, so you have to identify what your objective is if your objective is sales then you have to evaluate by seeing how many conversions you got what is the cost per customer acquisition if you are uh, so if you are a lifestyle company no so lifestyle say mintra typically e commerce companies they will evaluate based on cost per customer acquisition cost per conversion right uh, if you are a real estate company it will be based on cost per lead uh, it will be based on lead rate okay shambhavi is asking how to maintain crm in digital marketing Sham shambhavi customer relationship management is very very critical and we are seeing in digital marketing no uh, sometimes there is lot of negativity and it adversely affects the online reputation of the company because some people they will post negative stuff right so companies have to manage their online reputation they have to manage their relationship with customers so there is something called a social crm so social is very good for building relationship with customers email is very good for building relationship right so use these to constantly reinforce use email marketing to cross sell right to nurture your lead so digital is very very powerful in crm and these are some of the tools social media your page is free your account is free organically you keep on posting content so your followers you you're acquiring followers and then you keep on hammering the followers till they buy of course without annoying them <laughs> uh, right so it is like crm okay uh, how small companies dr ganeshan is saying how small companies will will enhance their traffic in spite of having creative content dr ganeshan the answer the question is not very clear uh you are saying how will they enhance the traffic see for enhancing traffic no first of all uh you need to create quality content your website has to have very good ux ui navigation then do seo and then run paid campaigns to drive traffic to the website and make sure you are getting ROAS return on ad spend because if you are running paid ad campaign no you need to justify you put uh, 1 lakh rupees what is the return and if return is not there ultimately you will have to stop running an ad so you will not be able to scale traffic so when you are running paid campaign you have to worry you have to focus on ROAS the ROI of your campaign right okay uh, there are many uh, how google algorithm works in seo javed uh, seo itself is a very long uh, topic but to quickly tell you uh, the bread the bread in google seo is all about meta tags so meta tags means identifying keywords understanding the user intent and then uh, tagging your content with the right keywords which match with the user intent before that you have to create good content it should be original if you are just copying pasting from internet you will not be able to rank whatever you do starting point is original content of course you can rehash content but put your own perspective maybe put indian examples right carry out maybe a small dipstick research and include that research in that article so at least some part of the article has to be original right once you have good content 
do meta tags tag it with keyword so google will understand what your content stands for after that you have to get backlinks because backlink is third party right so it is user feedback so then you have to do an outreach uh, and get backlinks all right so i think uh, i will not be able to take each and every question uh, so maybe uh, we can uh, take some questions over email uh, since uh, time is up uh, so shreyashi is asking uh, no uh, amira is asking for uh, video uh, this ppt and recording i'm sure uh, macro will make that available prasval is saying what is the main mistake you see in ads uh ma'am there are so many mistakes which keep on happening very good ads are there but when you click and go to the landing page the landing page is crappy that is the biggest mistake in digital marketing so there is a saying uh do not invite people to your house till your house is ready is up to the mark till you have spruced up your house right similarly there is no point in running an ad if your landing page is not in order so invest in building a very good landing page uh, put triggers uh, put credibility put trust there's no point in running an ad campaign doing digital marketing if you are not able to win trust of people so what is the trust quotient do you have any accreditation do you have some reviews ratings if it is not there there's no point in spending money on digital right okay uh, all right so uh, some questions which i am not able to take i will try and answer over uh, email so thank you very much you can connect with me on social on all my handles uh, whether it's linkedin twitter everywhere my handle is uh, prof seema gupta so connect with me and we can take this discussion forward thank you ma'am thank you so much and thank you everybody uh, who has joined this webinar uh, the recording of this webinar and this presentation will be live on youtube in next one day and everyone who attended this webinar will definitely get a certificate participation certificate by monday monday morning thank you thank you very much thank you so much thanks to all the participants for taking out time you've been lovely thank you <laughs>